coming out. A little. <laughs> I mean... But this complete stranger who's brand new and definitely wants to be hard on the rules because that's the way it's supposed to be done and you're new. Yeah. Is not going to be the one for Richard because they're just going to be so adherent that Richard's not going to be able to have like an actual conversation and make them think. Well, yeah, she's just a fresh little newbie. <laughs> <laughs> Richard asks about Verna and is told that she's a novice. She can't fucking have anything to do with him anymore. Or any of the other boys, it's her turn to learn right now, and it's going to take her years and years and years to work her way back up to being a sister. And it's all Richard's fault. Or at least that's the way Richard's feeling about it. Yeah. Well, but he also feels like that's fucked up. Because he doesn't think she did anything wrong. Really. Like, he knows overall this all, this whole thing is wrong. But, like, she did what she was told. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> So they enter his room, and it is fucking huge and luxurious, too. You've got all the nice things in there. He goes out on the balcony, and Richard again does a Batman scan and makes a map in his head of everything he sees. We are going to note the exits. We are going to find the weak points. When the shit hits the fan, I am going to be ready. Yep, we're going that way. <laughs> Back in the room, he opens a door to the giant bedroom, and it's got another balcony facing the sea. He also said that his entire house would fit twice into this one room. He's got a bad-ass fucking location here, guys. <laughs> Talk about, wait, I get to stay here for free? <laughs> and you feed me. And I can leave? Is there cable? Are you going to bring me coffee in the morning so I can sit out on this cool little balcony and... Drink my coffee and <laughs> read the paper. Because you know what? Actually, I'm okay. The only kicker is we don't allow beer inside. Oh. So. Oh, that's a. There's that. Hard pass. Yeah. Now, will everything else, your entire life, will be fully taken care of, but you just, you can't have any more of those nice pale ales or hearty stouts or. Would we be able to leave and, like, take a break from palace living to to go get some beer <laughs> yeah well yeah <clears throat> yeah we would have to okay we're free to go as we please you see oh could could we take one right now do you think you know what i think it would be a shame if we didn't i agree <laughs> okay that was weird <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the beer break it is <laughs> surprise all right so tonight we do not have one of our local breweries to talk about. I was in a hurry at the store and needed to grab something, so I got my hands on a Red's Wicked Black Cherry. Now, I haven't tried this flavor. I know we've never done it on the podcast before. Um, I assume it's just like the Red's Wicked Apple Cider. Yeah, they have right? a strawberry one, too, I think. Oh, they do. I've never tried that one, either. <laughs> Hmm, this is a rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> but they are 8%, which is a little surprising. Hmm. It's not, it's not... Uh, Nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's not like river beer, where it's like 3 4% where you can, you can have a few of them and you're fine. This is oh, you maybe one, two, and you, you're probably yeah, good. Yeah, you probably don't need to indulge too much. No. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, cheers, J.D. Cheers. Fuck yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh, it smells good. Oh my gosh, you know what? It smells like, um, do you remember the cherry flavor of the the, oh, the Kool-Aid dudes with the face at Squeeze-Its? Yeah, I remember Squeeze-Its. In fact, we've talked about them during another beer break before. They smell like this. <laughs> and the, it tastes pretty good. For a second, I got, like, a medicine-y taste. That's not necessarily this drink's fault. It's Robitussin's fault. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty good the more you drink it, too. <laughs> well, we do have a few more of these, so I think we ought to get one more, and we will be back right after this. And we're back. See? Just like we said we would be. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so 
Pasha points out the women's quarters where the sisters sleep and tells him that he is not to go in there. Unless, you know, you're invited, <laughs> then, then it's totally fine. Uh, but while doing so, calls him young man and wags her finger at him again. Obviously, Richard does not like this, and he very effectively lets her know. Yeah. He lets her know that she is not going to keep talking down to him by calling him out of his name. If she does, he's going to make life very, very difficult for her. Reader laugh. Yeah. Reader laugh. No, we all know this is true. He can make life fucking miserable for Pasha if he chooses to. Well, and I think he asks her, so what do I call you, Sister Pasha? And she's like, no, I'm going to try and become sister by, you know, my work with you here. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's not going to fucking happen if you don't <laughs> call me Richard. So you're saying you need me to behave for you to get that raise. <laughs> okay. Good <All> luck. Right. <laughs> So, Pasha tries to regain control of the situation by scolding him about his manners, but Richard stops her. Because Richard is the seeker, and he don't put up with that bullshit. <laughs> he knows that she is worried she's going to mess this up, and that's why she's acting this way. But she should be more worried that he's going to kill her. When he said that, <laughs> I, I, that's not where my head was. I was still in the space where we were just talking about how he's going to fuck up her becoming a sister. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you shouldn't worry about my manners, little girl. You should be worried that I'm going to kill you in your sleep tonight, you little brat. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Have you not been listening? Because I'm making threats left and right. So. <laughs> oh, actually, that's not a threat. It's a promise. So... I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse. So but... sleep well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> he fills her in on how he feels about being in the collar because apparently she didn't get that yet. <laughs> and he tells her that they're not friends <laughs> and he does that. not give a shit about her theology. This is about life and death for him. Yeah, it's a fucking fight and he's going to fight it. And sorry, not sorry if that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm not just some little kid that you're training for fun here. Like, you took me from my life, and I need to get the fuck back to it, and you're in my way. So, watch out. So move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pasha apologizes and tells him that she just wants to help him. She's just doing what she was trained. I mean, <sighs> the Nazis said that, too. Just gonna say. <laughs> they were also just doing what they were told, and yeah. it doesn't make it right. No. <laughs> Just, okay. I'm sorry, All that right. thought's okay. just yeah. out there in the universe yeah, now. Yeah, it's just floating out there now. <laughs> uh, and Richard tells her to just be herself. That's weird advice to give right now. I, I know where he was trying to go. Just be you. Don't freak out. Don't overthink this situation. Uh, to me, personally, I think he's trying to lull her into just take a deep breath when you're around me. You're fine. You can think a little bit more freely. And so he can convince her to do some shit probably later. Well, I think also just trying to get her to stop, like, cracking the whip so hard. Like, not you're doing that to try and overcompensate for something. Oh, right. So, like, knock it off. Just chill, because that's going to get you farther with me than you being so crazy. Stop being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Pasha then has Richard sit, and she uses her magic on the collar so that she'll be able to do the recognizing thing and, and track him down with a little GPS. At first, he doesn't like the feeling, but the longer it goes on, the more he's like, hey, you can keep that up. Well, and her tits were right in his face. Yeah, that's not bad. So that probably didn't hurt. <laughs> that's awful. What are you doing there? Hey, <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to fight. Yeah. It's been a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> so Pasha asks him his diet requirements and shows him a closet filled with fancy clothes in his size. Yeah. Which was a thing because he was like, hey, you guys didn't know I was coming. And they're like, oh, no, no, Verna, she, she filled this in. What the fuck did Verna fill you in on? Was she checking my pant sizes while I was sleeping? <laughs> Weird. Weirdo. Well, it's also funny because apparently Verna filled somebody in enough to fill the closet, but that person kept their fucking mouth shut because most of the other people still didn't know. So it was like secret, secret. 
Secret, secret. Tell no one. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Put the pants in the, in the drawer. His inseam is a 32. <laughs> <laughs> she also shows him some bowls filled with coins that he can use to buy shit more his style because he's like, I'm not wearing that frilly shit that you have in there. I'm a woods guide, bitch. I need neutrals. It's kind of like Harry Potter. Here you go, buddy. You got a whole room full of gold. Go buy whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And he's a new wizard. See, it was okay. It was a stretch. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Richard also doesn't think it's right because it's not his gold. So he also feels kind of weird, just like Harry Potter does about the gold. But she insists like, no, fucking take it. We're cool. You're, you're our guest. Keep the money. Did you not notice the palace on the private island? <laughs> we have money. Go ahead. Spend it. All-inclusive resort, baby. <laughs> you just want her to look him in the eye and go, I dare you to try and spend all of that today. <laughs> I dare you. We'll refill it by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the tooth fairy is very good to us. Yes. <laughs> Pasha pulls out a red coat, and she says he's going to look great in it. Now, we know that Jeb, from the beginning of this book, had a mm -hmm. vision about Richard in a red coat with gold buttons. It is obviously this fucking coat, okay? Richard doesn't know this, but we know this. So now we know something that Richard doesn't know, and we can all just shout at him through the pages to not put the fucking coat on, right? So that's going to be fun. Yeah, well, you want to. <laughs> and also, the coat. just the fact that it's a red coat does not go over my head either. Good kind is famously known for his hatred of like communism and all of that, mm -hmm. and this is a a very nice jacket given to him from somebody from the Imperial Order. Essentially, you know, they're not super involved yeah. with the whole government thing, but it's a it's a nice red coat, yeah, which has. Symbolism. Yes, symbolism. Symbology. <laughs> symbology. I was thinking, yeah. am I going to do that or not? <laughs> um, but no, and it's it's funny that he's like, I don't like that fucking coat. Richard doesn't like the red coat. Yeah, he immediately <laughs> takes it and throws it on the couch and then is like, Pasha, get the fuck out. I'm done with your shit. Yep. I'm tired. This is over. Good night. So before she goes, she tells him she was just trying to help him look more civilized because you got some dirty, nasty, shitty clothes on, Woods Guide. And Richard responds by telling her that the blue she's wearing isn't her fucking color. And then he slams the door in her face. <laughs> that blue looks like shit on you. Just saying. Bam. Bam. It actually was pretty hilarious to me that he said that because it's such a petty little asshole comment. And he could have just said something like, hey, I haven't even gotten a chance to take a shower yet. Maybe give me a minute before you start criticizing what I look like. But instead, he, he was just like, you are wearing a shitty color and slammed the door. I think Richard knows that Pasha cares about the way she looks because everybody was, you know, they're all dressed in their own thing, kind of, all the sisters. Mm -hmm. It made a reference to that in the last chapter. So she's obviously showing cleavage and she's going to use her body to help the creator. And Richard fucking sees that. So how do you verbally cut somebody who looks like that? Obviously, you have to make a comment on the appearance of that person. Yeah, no, I don't I don't disagree. I just think it's really funny. He didn't have to, but he did. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, fuck them. They're the people who captured him. Yeah. They're not friends. <laughs> he owes Verna a thing or two, but they're not friends. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, speaking of Verna, he starts getting his stuff ready to go somewhere when he hears a knock at the door, and it turns out to be fucking Verna. That's right. She had been waiting for Pasha to go... And trying not to get caught. Remember, they're not supposed to have any fucking contact at all. Yeah, which is which is really kind of fucky, too, because they've spent all this time together. So, like, she should be able to say hi. Yeah, I mean, she should. You're right. <laughs> she corrects him immediately when he calls her Sister Verna, and he's like, I can't call you anything else, because that's the way I fucking look at you. Sorry. Yeah, you're Sister Verna. Deal with it. That's just who you are now. And he apologizes that she was broken down a novice, but he's like, hey, you being put in the stables was your doing. That wasn't my fucking fault. 
And she's like, yeah, I know. I planned that shit. I don't want to wash she my lets hands. Him in on the secret. 